Normally I like to look for potential multi-baggers. That's what I usually focus on, doing a deep dive on specific companies, trying to understand their value proposition, what market are they tapping into, and why could the stock potentially go up hundreds or thousands percent over time. That said, I do like to know what's going on in the broader world, broader financial markets, what is going on, what are the broader trends, the macro backdrop? What is sort of the broader trends that's pushing assets one direction or another? So what most people do is they hang on to every single keyword by the central bankers. You know, if a central banker, you know, in a credit in a moment of stress says, Hey, we are all in or we'll do whatever it takes that can turn the tide. And when, when you get closer to a market top and the federal reserve starts raising interest rates that can also impact what happens with different asset classes. So earlier today, a pre-recorded interview with Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell came out of a 60 minute interview where he talked about how the economy was at an inflection point. And I wanted to discuss what Jerome Powell is potentially seeing in the US markets and what it could potentially mean for asset classes in the US. What are the potential secondary effects to be mindful of in the months ahead? So this is this is sort of the key points sort of being being pulled away the key takeaways from this interview that I'm trying to bring to you and what it could potentially mean for US stocks. Now, normally, as I as I mentioned already, you know, this is a no hype mission focused channel where I'm trying to find potential multi baggers or exceptional companies that I think can compound at, you know, very satisfactory rates over long periods of time. And you know, that's so if you enjoy learning about those types of companies, please make a point of subscribing. And if you're already a subscriber, I appreciate that thumbs up. And if you want to follow my personal journey, as I buy or try to buy these these potential multi baggers for my investment portfolio, go to unrivalinvesting.com, click on journey. But today, as I already mentioned, we're going to talk about Fed, you know, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's speech and what it could mean for asset classes broadly, particularly US equity markets. So, you know, as I already mentioned, so he says it's highly unlikely the Fed will raise rates this year despite stronger economy. So this is one of the snippet snippets from the interview earlier today. Now, normally, hearing that the, the 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 Federal Reserve is not going to raise rates, that is enough to, to give the bull a little bit of excitement. Hey, let's bid up asset classes because over the last better part of the last hundred years, the Federal Reserve has been instrumental in terms of pulling away the punch bowl at the peak of the party or maybe even delayed one would argue. And that's almost always what precedes equity markets from declining is you have some sort of Federal Reserve interference saying, hey, you know what, we need to tighten things up. And then equity prices start declining. You see this cycle after cycle after cycle over the better part of the last 100 years. So normally, when you see something like this, you'd go, oh, extra innings, this is great. But argue, argue this market cycle is a little more nuanced, as we were already sort of at extra innings when COVID hit, and you start getting a dramatic amount of stimulus. And we'll talk about that in just a second. As you know, here it is another snippet. Jerome Powell says US economy is at an inflection point. What we're seeing now is really an economy that seems to be at an inflection point. And that's because of widespread vaccination and strong fiscal support, strong monetary policy support. We'll get why what, what what is exactly is he seeing because keep in mind he sees data that the public probably doesn't see for a few days or even weeks ahead of time so maybe this means he's starting to see inflation pick up as he started to see you know and, and it's going well ahead of their two percent goal and a lot of people are arguing that inflation is actually well ahead, well above their their stated figures you know people like anyone that needs to use lumber to build anything is like holy smokes inflation is way higher than what they're saying um but if there's if if by their official metrics it's actually starting to go above, then it could cause some sort of nervous jitters in the markets. And so here's here's what is another snippet where he goes, we feel we're at a place where the economy is about to start growing much more quickly and job creation coming in much more quickly. Okay, so why is this important to understand? I would argue this is important to understand because he's saying the economy is starting to get into a position where federal reserve support or monetary policy support may not be able to step up anymore. We're getting to a point where things are heating up. We can't step up. So let me let me go, go into a couple of the statistics that might be relevant in terms of thinking about what he sees. And so one is which is 
the effectively the US money creation or measured by M2 growth, uh, effectively saying how much currency is getting into the economy, how much money is being created, getting getting you know sent into the broader economy. And you can see this is one of the fastest growths uh, in terms of US currency, you know, in several decades. And so this is the monetary support that we're talking about, effectively you know, printing billions of dollars that ends up getting as, as more currency in the system. One of the fastest growth rates in several decades, at least going back to 1960. So this is the monetary support. That's the one angle, but it's a dual engine sort of propping it up in response to COVID. What else have we seen? We've seen dramatic fiscal debt expansion. Keep in mind this chart, this chart was before COVID. So you already saw this, this huge uptick you know, in response to the great financial crisis. Um, but then it actually, you know, here's the updated version where, you know what, now we are, we are well above where we peaked um, with, with uh, World War II. So, you know, going back World War II, you know, 100 to 120 percent, um, you know, debt, federal debt to GDP. And here it is, um, you know, we're, we're, we're getting, we're, we're already past that. Um, so what's, what's this have to do with stocks? And so this is, this is the part where I think it's, it's very relevant to consider. Um, and here it is, it was done by Crestcat Capital. And I think, I think this is a really, really interesting point that, that investors of all types should consider, which is that the Federal Reserve, when, when I say Federal Reserve is stepping in, it to sort of trying to help their monetary support. Here it is, they're showing this chart shows the Federal Reserve purchases of treasury notes and bonds. So as the fiscal situation means huge deficits, printing a lot of, excuse me, f fiscal deficits means issuing a lot of debt. Well, who's actually buying that debt? And that's what this chart is showing, which is the amount of debt per month that's being bought by the Federal Reserve. So it's effectively like one pocket moving from one pocket to the other. Okay, the Treasury is going to sell this debt and then the Federal Reserve is going to buy it. And so that's that's what's supporting these interest rates. That's what's supporting these interest rates. And you can see, I mean, some astronomical figures like 82% um, of the number as a percentage of overall monthly issuance in terms of October 2020, 82% of Treasury notes and bonds issued were, were effectively purchased by the Federal Reserve. This is not a normal market by any measure. This is a market that is dominated by the Federal Reserve, sort of keeping interest rates down, forcing them down. And you could see, no wonder why interest rates started to pick up recently, is you could see the percentage as the issuance has gone up. The federal, if, if the issuance goes up and the Federal Reserve's Federal Reserve amount that they're buying each month effectively stays flat. Well, amount goes up, Federal Reserve support, support stays flat. That means the percentage of new issuances is, is going to drop, in which case, who's going to sort of step up to make sure that, that, that they're being bought, in which case, yeah, this is this is the increasing risk of higher rates. And I think that's that's the secondary effect from what Federal Reserve Jerome Powell is talking about saying like look we are at an inflection point things are getting hot things are things are really starting to pick up here they are not going to be in a position to step up and continue to support dramatic fiscal deficits they're not going to be in a position to say hey we can increase the the federal reserve support to to effectively stabilize treasury markets this this does create the risk that interest rates continue their march higher in the months ahead. So this is this is, I would argue is the secondary effects that the financial markets would start considering. And it also comes at a time when valuations I'd argue are most sensitive or are would be extremely sensitive because here it is, this is from the Felder report where the broad stock market is now about 10% more expensive than when it was just over 20 years ago at the peak of the dot com mania. However, the median stock is now 75% more expensive than when it was back then. So this is looking based on price to sales ratio for the S&P 500 in aggregate, which is 10% more. But then if you look at it and on what, what the median stock is and what the median valuation is, you're saying it's 75% more. So you are losing the support potentially from the Federal Reserve. They're saying, hey, we're at an inflection point. Things are heating up now, i.e. we're not going to be in position to provide dramatic amount of support to buy future treasury issuances 
that's at least the, the signaling that, that I think people are starting to pick up. And you're at a, it's sort of at a double whammy when valuations are also at a very elevated rate or potentially very elevated level. One, one could argue, you know, looking at something like this. And so the question is, you know, you look at this and what should, what should one potentially do, you know, as, as they're, as they're looking at this. And so I would argue there's a few different things like one, you know, like you, you're, you're, you're facing a scenario where, you know, us stocks, you know, from a historic valuation perspective, it's, it's higher than it's been. You see a situation where the federal reserve saying it's an inflection point, like IE, it's going to be harder for them to provide a lot more support. Now they say, Hey, we're not going to be raising rates, but this whole buying back a ton of bonds, buying, buying a bunch of bonds each month, that's going to be harder for them to justify to increase that amount if they need to, especially given that deficits are shooting up. So who's going to fund that? What, who's going to step in to make sure rates don't, don't start spark, you know, sparking higher. And so I would argue like, what, what are you as an investor supposed to do? Like what, what can you potentially capitalize on? Well, one, one, you know, one folks, you know, could, could argue, Hey, you should consider buying commodities. Now I, I personally don't like that game because I'd rather focus on unrivaled companies and commodities are really tough to play. Uh, you know, you're not sure which, which one will have the right supply demand, you know, dynamics over many years in time. You're not sure, you know, how the cost curve works out and there's commodities. I, I just, I generally don't like commodity plays. So for all the folks, you know, saying, Hey, why don't you go check out uranium or go check out this lumber yard or go check out gold. I'm lo I'm less inclined to do that than trying to find an exceptional or what I argue are unrivaled companies, companies that grow with potential inflation over time or that have pricing power. So I, I would argue like the first step is to know what you own and why, what's the thesis behind why you own it. And, and for me personally, as I look at each of my top holdings, I'm saying, okay, why does this, you know, what, what's this company's value proposition and why do I think the risk reward is compelling? Like, and I'm, I'm re, you know, re underwriting the thesis each month when I'm reviewing my holdings. Okay. What do I think is the risk reward now at this updated price and you know, journey subscribers can see that like, Hey, I, I put together a sheet of, of my top holdings and you can see how I'm personally thinking about the risk reward at any given point, um, for these positions. Oh, okay. I still think there's 200% upside here. Yeah, I am going to hold it, even though I'm aware of this, this broader macro risk with, let's say the federal reserve effectively saying, Hey, we can't provide more monetary support other than not raising interest rates. So know what you own and why the second point is I argue at this point more so than, than the better part of this last year. So I'd say at this point, you really, really need to be disciplined on what prices you're willing to pay and to be very thoughtful about once again, that risk reward, but thinking about, you know, why am I, if, if you're, you know, a lot of people are playing the speculative SPAC game, you know, a lot of people are playing the meme, the meme stocks, but you know, I, if for the, for those folks that are playing the SPAC game, you know, like if you're paying significantly above, let's say the deal value and a deal hasn't been announced, know why you're doing that. Be really thoughtful on this. And, and one could argue, you've seen a, a sort of deflation in terms of the SPACs in the last few weeks where a lot of these highly speculative SPACs, they're no longer trading at these huge premiums. Some of them have sold off by 50% plus in just the last few weeks. So this is a good example of not only know what you own, but be very careful what price you're underwriting them. Think about what you think this risk reward is now. And I would say, you know, another aspect to consider is when the federal reserve is reaching that point, where they're saying, Hey, this is an inflection point in the economy that is definitely closer in the market cycle to them pulling away the punch bowl than it is to them saying, Hey, we're going to do whatever it takes to make sure asset classes reflate and things start moving upwards. So I, I would say knowing that it does it does probably pay to have dry powder. And I know it's always painful to hold low yielding cash, especially in this environment. So either have dry powder or have a hedging strategy in place to deal with volatility. If you know, the, the, if the markets start recognizing this as a risk, if the market starts saying, Hey, you know what, this is, this has been a key crux of the economy. So sort of saying, Hey, this, this monetary support and fiscal support. And one could argue once you lose one of those engines, it's potential that you lose both of them because without monetary support, 
you start losing the potential of keeping rates low. And so once you start seeing higher rates, then that fiscal support also can take a hit in terms of just crazy deficit spending. So that's that's definitely something to keep in mind. You know, if you want to see exactly the, like what am I doing? What are the companies that I'm buying in this environment? You know, you do need to go to unrivaledinvesting.com, you know, where I have a monthly potential multibagger. Each month I call out a potential monthly multibagger in a stock that I think could potentially go up hundreds or thousands of percent over time. My full portfolio is detailed in a monthly overview. We're building a community for like-minded investors looking for these types of uh, potential multibaggers. And there's also other exclusive content. So if that's that's for unrivaledinvesting.com, click on Journey. And overall, I, I hope you've enjoyed this video, thinking about this inflection point that Jerome Powell has been talking about with the economy and what could potentially mean for US equity. So if, if you've thought that this video is helpful, please make a point of subscribing and hitting that thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching.